Happy Halloween from the Fantasy Footballers. We have a special show in store for you, and you don't want to miss it because there are good jokes. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. Oh, it's not an ordinary Thursday, is it, fellas? No. (laughs) No, it's not. (laughs) Welcome in (laughs) to the Fantasy Footballers. Happy Halloween. It's October 31st. For those of you just listening, I'm going to describe what I am, am witnessing Straight across from me is I'm here, everybody. Goo 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 A full on walrus. Uh, that's Darren. I am the walrus to you, uh, Darren. I am the walrus. Oh, We've got a full Darren Waller in studio. Thanks for joining us, Darren. Where <laughs> he, can't he can't see, he can't use his hands because they're just flippers. Oh, this is a mess. This is awful. And, and in case you're curious, Jason. Yes. <laughs> is dressed up as Chris Goblin himself. Jason. Now he can't see. I have no glasses on. He can't talk now, without personifying some sort of bridge it's, troll. It's really hard for me to use my normal voice <laughs> while I'm wearing this like mask. Your nose. And legend has it of they talked about, you know, Jim Carrey. I, I don't know who I'm talking to. <laughs> I'm talking to no one. Uh so Jim Carrey, when he played the Grinch, because his contacts were so insane, like, and they hurt so bad, he was they they brought in like Navy SEALs to help him train for torture training. Oh come on, that's I'm, not real. That check check the legends, check the the uh, the logs. But the Jason has knives going into his oh, eyes. It oh, sucks, he looks. Man. We should have so brought him in. This uh, I can't see anything like you, Mike, and yet I, neither one of us actually have something in our eye. <laughs> Whereas the Lizard King, oh, oh Sammy Watkins over here uh, is, you, look, the Lizard Party is starting to break through. I am, I'll say something right now. I'm pretty afraid that the real Sammy Watkins will watch this and begin to believe he is right <laughs> yeah. about the world around him. She told you. <laughs> <laughs> Call, called it. Oh, uh, nice. Welcome in. It, we have a a fantasy football podcast to I do. Fi- I figured out how I can see everyone. I just have to give you this side eye. Oh no, you look great, Mike. You see, the funny part was is I thought I was going to be doing the heavy lifting today. <laughs> I had to get some prosthetics put on. I've got a contact in, and here I am with two my two blind compadres. <laughs> we, we can't just, see. I can see Jack squat. We do. We do this all for you, Foot Clan. We, we've even got a Halloween segment today. We've got the fantasy forecast. We've got our starts of the week. <laughs> I'm watching Mike try to drink a With drink no hands. A mug. Oh, you got to go to the YouTube. Nailed and- it. Yes, I encourage you. We'll, ah. post, we'll post some pictures on the Instagram, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. On Twitter, at the FF Ballers. I know your wife oh. is very happy you didn't shave your face today, Jason. Oh, yeah. Last year, I became a, a human thumb after <laughs> Halloween. That's never a good thing. Also, I don't know how I could drink either. <laughs> trying to drink a glass. This is uh, this is quite the experience. Let's get into our Halloween segment. <laughs> so spooky. Oh man. So scary. So. Uh, Pretty sure I heard some toilet water in there. <laughs> it might have been. All right, today we're doing what we did last year. Compare a player to a Halloween candy. Jason, why don't you kick it off? Yeah, I'm going to say that Devonta Freeman <laughs> is like milk duds because Whoa. there are people out there that like Devonta Freeman and there are people out there that like milk duds. They think milk duds are good. And they go, oh, this is nice until you eat one and it wants to take your tooth out because it's the stickiest, un- un- unchewablest, 
awful piece of candy fake, out there. Fake chocolatey caramel. It's terrible. Wow. I, that used to be my go-to. Putting it, milk duds it, on blast. I am putting milk duds on blast, but not just milk duds. Devonta Freeman. Look, I have had a hard time getting over what you did to me last year. I'm still You're talking to Devonta. Yes, I'm talking to Devonta Freeman. Not uh, milk duds. One one and the same, I mean. <laughs> I mean, they're both trash now. <laughs> Okay. Oh, come on. Other players, other candy has come along and said, yeah, we don't. when was Milk Duds invented? Like the 20s? It had to be. When, it was like, actually the first candy. Exactly. And now we've 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 improved. We've gotten better. And, and look, you, you served your time. You were great once upon a time, I'm sure. But it's time to move on, and, and that's Devonta Freeman to me. All right. Uh, Judge Giamatti, I can't get over Jason's voice. Can you handle this? I think I can. I, can't I feel like I need to difference. pay. I need to pay him a troll uh, a toll. <laughs> you got to pay the troll toll. Yeah. All right. Um. Do you want me to go next? I sound different. No. 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 no you going. sound great, man. <laughs> you Never sound sounded better. Super Sweet. normal. Sweet. I'm gonna say that Sammy Watkins. I'm gonna give a little uh comparison to myself, the Lizard King himself. Sammy Watkins is taffy. Okay. Mm. I like when some do laffy you, taffy. When do you ever see? Regular old taffy. You only see it one time a year. And listen, I went back and looked. There were, out of Sammy Watkins' last 37 games played, there were 10 of them in double digits for fantasy points. That's 27% of the time. Well, I figure I like taffy about 27% of the time that I mm. put it into my mouth. The, sometimes... It can be a delicious treat. Oh, yeah, 27% of the time. The rest of the time, it's a really crappy flavor, or it's too hard, or too chewy, or gooey. You don't know what flavor it is. Mm. So that's what Sammy Watkins is to me. He's a 27% hit rate, just like Taffy. I got you. Well, with all this negativity, I'm bringing it back to positive. Oh, really? Because I'm also referring to myself. Oh, I should have done Chris Goplin. You sh well, it's too late now. Yeah. But Darren, I am the walrus. I... Am a full sized candy bar because Ooh. when you're trick or treating and you walk up to a house, you know what? You don't deserve. You do not deserve a full size candy bar. You deserve that handful of, of mostly crap taffy and, and taffy milk, and milk duds. duds. But sometimes you the, the night is just right, the stars have aligned. You walk up to a house and there it is for free. They hand you. A full size candy bar, it's like of, robbing a bank of your choice, and that's what Darren Waller was. He was off of your waiver wire or your last pick in the draft, and he has been nothing but sensational. He, he's also huge. He's a, <laughs> so it's like, oh sure. my gosh, look how big that this is. <laughs> that guy. I saw one. So we have our sleeper league, where we are what seven and one now. Seven and one. Yeah, oh, that's spectacular. We beat Juju. But That's right. Ninja, Ninja, I saw Ninja post it. He's that house this year. The oh. full-size candy he bar. He better be. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. If he's going to Costco to get like the – and he's like picking the cheap bag out, come on. Mix, mixer won't have that. <laughs> yeah. But we're holding it – you know, that, that league's got some money on the line for St. Jude. That's right. That's right. You know, if we, if we can bring it home. So a reminder, tomorrow on the show we've got in or out, the injury updates. We'll get you caught up on the latest. I, you know, today, Adam Schefter tweeted, David Johnson's not expected to be out there. What? So it'll be a, a mixture of uh, Ken Yon Drake Ooh. and trying, Alfred trying Moore. I'm just trying it out because I figure it's more likely than Grand Kenyon. I didn't understand that you were saying Yon at first. Oh, I, no, I just no. thought it was like you were emphasizing... The second syllable a lot. No. Ken Yawn Drake. <laughs> Yawn. Okay, so it's Y-A-W-N. So, that's correct. That's okay. what you're going to get tonight. And then you've got Alfred Morris and Zach Zinner. So three players that two weeks ago weren't on the Cardinals trying to overcome the 49er defense tonight. David Johnson's not likely to be there. A reminder, on Sunday morning, a full half hour of Mike bringing that's, you that it's me special uh, tilt edition of uh, start set. Oh, this and this this week in particular will be so tilty. But I otherwise, guarantee I it. mean, Jason, I can't I can't turn to my right. I can't see Jason. <laughs> He's, I'm gonna have a nightmare tonight. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much money would it take for you to wear that the whole day? Uh, all of the money <laughs> because this sucks. <laughs> 
Fantasy Forecast. Again, I'm going to look into my camera right here, and I'm going to tell Sammy that this is this is pretend. Okay, <laughs> I am not a real lizard person emerging from the darkness because there there aren't there real aren't lizard real lizard people. people okay, PSA for you. All right, fantasy forecast time. Other than David Johnson, by the way, Matt Breida, Raheem Mostert, both questionable. You could you could gaze an eye at Jeff Wilson Jr. tonight if Matt Breida and Mostert are both out. I agree. So would you play Jeff Wilson or you know, in that situation, or Adrian Peterson against I, Buffalo? I actually love Adrian Peterson. He was almost my start of the week this week. Um, so while Jeff Wilson, I think, is a player you can play, I would I would definitely – I'm, uh, I like Adrian Peterson. I, I think Buffalo's defense is great against wide receivers, and we'll get into it in the matchup, but they're not that good against running backs so far. All right, we've got another London game. Now, Mike, we've, we've done you a small favor. It's called Daylight Savings Time. Yeah. And so you can get up an hour later. By Daylight you, Savings Time, you mean everyone else is doing it. Arizona that's right. does not. So our time schedule actually shifts, which, hey, if you're listening to this, you're going to get the podcast an hour earlier. That's true. Starting next week. That's true. Yeah. Walruses, Arizona. Only two species and states that don't recognize daylight savings. And Hawaii. That's true, too. <laughs> All right. So there is a London morning game. The Texans take on the Jags. Texans are five and three. Jacksonville's a respectable four and four. Texans are only one and a half point favorites in this game. Savage Garden. Yes. Gardner Minshew versus Deshaun Watson. I'm super excited about this game. I mean, would you have been – who expected Jacksonville to have the leading receiver in the AFC? DJ Chart currently leading the AFC in receiving yardage. Do, 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 do. And the leading rusher. Leonard Fournette currently leading the AFC and doing all of this with a backup quarterback. A rookie quarterback, a six, I'd say a round. six rounder, and uh, you know this team is it's it's right there, and so and the Texans you just lost JJ Watt. I'm excited for this game. The over under is 46 and a half. I would oh, take the over. Goodness gracious, that's a stupid line. Well, I mean it's not a bad line. It's not a low. I think you have to impact the London part of it. I would take the over as well. I, I expect a little Wim Wimbley uh, yeah. field. Yeah, conditions. I, I, yeah, that's that's fair. The Wembley Field is not the best, so maybe you'll see some, you know, a, a play that looks like it could be something for Fournette that doesn't turn out. But um, yeah, no, I, I expect a high scoring affair here because Deshaun Watson can overcome this middle of the pack Jacksonville defense, and Houston doesn't have a defense. Yeah, so that's I, great. No, Deshaun Watson, you're obviously starting him. You're starting Minshew. Oh, yes. Mike, um, we're going to talk about him later. Yeah. He's in a great spot. A lot of people are asking in Minshew. the starts of the week. Spoiler. I know. I know. Uh, a lot of people are asking Minshew versus other guys that are, you know, real questionable, like, you know, Lamar Jackson going up against the Patriots. That oh. one's really, really tough. That's like, I, I think you could go either way. They're pretty close in my rankings. I think the safer option is is probably Minshew, right? I, yes, I, I agree. It, it, you know, the, I, I'm coming around on just playing Lamar. I mean, you kind of dance with the girl that brought you. Lamar is, he's going to run for 80 yards, right? Yeah, he'll run for 80, but how many turnovers is he going to have? How many passing yards is he actually going to have? <sighs> We're going like, to find I'm, out a lot about the out. Patriots. I'm freaked out by playing Lamar this All week. All right, so Fournette, he's been amazing. He's in your lineup. DJ Chark is in your lineup. Hopkins, Hopkins is basically leading the NFL in, in targets since week five. He's back. Where are you with uh, Carlos Hyde in this game, Duke Johnson? They're just kind of there, <laughs> right? These yes. guys are every week we have the same conversation about them. It's a repeat. If you are into Adrian Peterson, then you have to be into Carlos Hyde. Oh, that's required. It's 19 carries for 83 yards last week. He two weeks ago was the stinker, twelve for thirty-five. But he's just getting s incredible volume. Maybe three of the last four weeks, nineteen or more carries. That's that's ridiculous on a really high-powered offense. Yeah, I I would agree with some of what you're saying. I think Carlos Hyde is a fine flex start. You got bye week issues. You could do worse than him. I the difference between Carlos Hyde and Adrian Peterson though 
is that even though Adrian Peterson is older, Adrian Peterson is still far more talented than Carlos Hyde. I think right now it's oh, wow. far worse offense. Sure, but if you were to if you were to So would you play you play Peterson over Hyde this week? I would no. play Peterson over Hyde, yes. No. Put it on the board. Oh, let's do that. Oh, I gotta find it. <laughs> Water bet. Now, does that mean that when one of us gets wet because we made the bet like this, we have to like... Ooh, dress up again? Water goblin it? No, I don't think you want to be a water goblin. Thank goodness. I, I was going to say the only thing maybe more it's difficult... It's actually great for me. I love water. Oh, yeah, because you're a... I'm an aquatic creature. That's true. And you look so comfortable in your own <laughs> skin there with your tusks blocking the microphone. Uh, the only thing worse than maybe uh, playing Hyde or Peterson confidence wise is betting on them so congratulations to both of you thank you thank you uh i think that chris Conley's an interesting flex play this week at wide receiver for the jacksonville jaguars agreed i i think that dd factors in and we're this is that's a status you're gonna have to chase the entire week because we don't know one way or the other right now if dd is out then i'm very very interested in conley is is your and is your confidence still there if dd isn't active it's not as there, but okay. I, I think that you know Conley's the big play receiver. You've got a couple of weeks in a row where he's been providing that big play. You've got Kenny Stills on the other side. If this game turns into more of the shootout, keep up, sling it around type of game, then, then you're probably going to get a big play from either Conley or Stills. It's just you're rolling the dice, right? Because you're yes. not going to have passing volume for either player. I know we're all very, very mad at Kenny Bills for not coming through in that real plus – matchup but the Jaguars are just 16th against fantasy wide receivers Kenny Stills is still in play as a three would you play him over like uh Larry Fitzgerald tonight yes 100 percent. what about over Christian Kirk tonight uh I'm gonna go Kirk there I think I agree with you on that yep the goblin agrees unanimous <laughs> <laughs> Darren Fells I think he's uh yep. you can play him yeah you can stream him he, he's one of those guys where his baseline is nothing, but his touchdown upside is more realistic than some of the other garbage tight ends right now. Well, and let's ask this question because I, I want to talk about Chris Herndon for a second. Darren Fells or Chris Herndon if Herndon's active? Herndon 100%. See, I, I have changed my thought on co week one confidence with Chris Herndon. This is another one of those look through the right lens problems for me. We look at this as a very... Well, Ryan Griffin's keeping the roster spot warm for Herndon, and when Herndon comes back, it's a all the snaps are to Herndon, and everyone loves Herndon. You know what? Ryan Griffin's been great. You don't reward greatness with the bench, and they pay him, and he plays, and Darnold likes him, and I'm worried that for a couple weeks at least, you're going to get more of a timeshare there than you can expect, and you've got injury risk with Herndon. He's got an injury that is... Very easy to re-aggravate. Sure, that 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 part is definitely true. But comparing him to Fells, you're still all over. Because uh, you know what we see in Griffin is that they are running routes with their tight end. What we saw in preseason, you know, preseason we always talk about for tight ends and how they're utilized. That's actually one of the things that's pretty telling. And Chris Herndon was great in those drives with Darnold, and so I and you hear Darnold talk about getting Herndon back and being a great offense once we have Herndon. But he I, might play 50% of the snaps or 30% of the snaps. Sure. I mean, maybe maybe week one, it's a little dicey. You got the injury. You, you don't know how much they're getting back. But I'm always going to side on the guy that has the chance to be a 8, 9, 10 target player. Darren Fells is, you know, maybe he'll get five targets. Darren I mean, Fells, four of the past six weeks, a top 10 tight end. Yes, including with two top three. Well, one of, no, when he was the tight end 10, he was that was just yardage. Uh, what, was his, what was his line? He was, let me go back. <laughs> that was the big play. That was, no, he was uh, six for 69. Nice. Yeah. Bears, three and four. Eagles, four and four. Games in Philadelphia. The Eagles are five point favorites. Bears are trying to stave off a four game losing streak. The Bears are dead last in their division after last year crazy. being one kick away from the title. Uh, They're one kick away from 500 right now, too. That's true. That's true. And I'm sure all their problems are their kicker again. <laughs> right? It's all the kicker. It's hard to kick in a windy city. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Right? They're, good they're in Philadelphia. But he's from Chicago. It's, it's, oh, no, it's, it's a good... It's, it's, a, it's a good... It, it works. It's a good right. joke, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it works. 
Um, but this, I mean, look, the, the Eagles had an impressive performance last week. Game's a 42.5 point over under. That puts an implied point total of only 18.5 points on the Bears. Mm. Not great. No. Not great, Bob. Uh, the Eagles are sixth in the NFL against the running back position, giving up just 17.3 fantasy points per game. David Montgomery had 27 rushing attempts last week. David Montgomery will end the week as the RB what? I, I think David Montgomery ends the week probably as like around the RB 28, 29, gets a little bit of work. I mean, his upside is that he falls into a touchdown because I don't expect this to be a good game against the Eagles. They're, they're, you know, their front seven is great against the run. It's their secondary that's beatable. I don't think Trubisky can do that. So I do expect a lower scoring game um, on the on the flip side. You really, really wonder if you're going to get DJX back because it changes a lot for this offense, for Carson Wentz. A lot of people out there, I'm one of them, might have to start Carson Wentz in a matchup that has been very tough against quarterbacks and, Bears, and wide receivers. Bears sixth against quarterbacks and sixth against wide receivers exactly. right now. Exactly. And now you bring in a team that's minus their, their deep threat, and you go, well, that's not the team that's going to beat them. I like that Philly's at home. I like Philly to win this game. I like Jordan Howard a lot. I think Jordan Howard's going to have a great opportunity. We'll talk about him later. Oh, my. I like him more really? than Montgomery. Uh, Miles Sanders, we he got banged up last week. Yeah, didn't I believe he did not practice yesterday. He didn't, but Darren Sproles did. Oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, are you considering Miles Sanders at all with, with not the really. matchup mixed with the injury? No. Pre preferably not. He, okay. He's hopefully a trade high candidate after last week if he can get back on the field. And by the way, this is a revenge game for Mister Jordan Howard. <sighs> and yeah. there are some revenge game narratives that are just—I mean—they're all pretty crappy. But this one seems like like he he owes him one, doesn't he? Yes. A re yeah. A I revenge mean, game gets thrown out with just someone that used to be on a team. This isn't just someone that used to be on a team. This is someone that was punted off the bridge for nothing and then drafted and after being great for you yes for years yes and then saying get out of here we don't need you we're gonna bring in mike davis and then <laughs> draft you know a rookie and we'll be able to just piecemeal it together no problem Allen robinson mike you love him yes oh, in this yeah. matchup obviously the eagles defense they can't defend the wide receiver position that's their biggest problem Give no they're dead last against wide receivers yeah. and Allen robinson is he is the target monster yet again at the wide receiver position on the Philly side though are you you know Alshon Jeffrey not been impressive he's kind of just a wide receiver three right yeah that's that's how I lean he's I mean six targets five targets the past couple weeks and four for 64 last week against Buffalo that's not it's not too bad he ha he does feel more like a low end two to me. I'm not going to downgrade him to a three yet. <laughs> Jason's <laughs> laughing. It's just it's funny. I'm watching the, the 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 monitor here. Yeah, and I'm just watching a walrus give advice <laughs> on fantasy football. It's absurd. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I like the Eagles a whole lot more if Djax plays, and that includes the other wide receivers on the team. I like that you've stayed pretty committed to the flippers too, Mike. Like you've you've done a little bit. But I had to go one hand because I couldn't even use the computer. <laughs> yeah, like the trackpad does not rep, does not uh, doesn't work with work the flip. with the pads. No, no. Uh, Zach Ertz, Dallas Goddard. We've talked a lot about him this week. You're playing Ertz. You could do worse than Goddard. Both yep. of these guys are in the top six in targets at the tight end position since week five. Goddard continues to see a high target share for what was. Considered a streaming tight end, so yes, keep playing him. He feels like he feels like the goal line tight end. Yes, and, <laughs> and, that, and yeah. Zach Ertz feels like the possession tight end. Yes, and that stinks. Yeah, for yeah. all the Zach Ertz owners, that's that is what has been hurting Zach Ertz is the red zone work has been going the other, the wrong direction. Vikings six and two taking on the Chiefs at Arrowhead. Chiefs are five and three. We have not had the official Patrick Mahomes ruled out yet, but we will. He's not going to be playing this week. He's listed at doubtful, which means the Chiefs are going to have to survive a very good Vikings team, and that's going to be hard. It's yeah. going to be a difficult task. They could be five and four. Yeah, and and Raiders hanging around in that division. That's about it, though. They'll be all right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cousins, Kirk Cousins. He's been 
you know, from a an NFL perspective, probably the best quarterback in football over the last handful of weeks. But fantasy wise, can you trust him in this matchup? I am. Yeah. Yeah, I, absolutely. You like playing against the Chiefs. They're, they're I love it. <laughs> look, I, I I get that they're they're be really being exploited by the running back position, but uh, because they're kind of at least fantasy wise against wide receivers, they've been okay seventh. But against the quarterback, they're twenty third. You're right, eighty. Kirk Cousins has been dominating. A go before last week, you know, he was coming off of a run of multiple games with four touchdowns, and he was actually sensational against Washington. Two hundred eighty five yards, almost an eighty nine percent completion rate. He just didn't throw a touchdown, and we know that in fantasy football, if you don't score a touchdown at the quarterback position, you're it's going to be a poor fantasy day. And I think he can bounce back from that. I'll, I'll bet on the odds for Kirk Cousins. Yeah, and, and he very well might have Adam Thielen back. Uh, he practiced again after the injury. He's got a good chance to play Sunday. I expect Thielen to suit it up. The Vikings have become a pretty straightforward fantasy situation with Dalvin Cook, who's you know the RB1 right now oh. uh, on the week for us, and – you know, leads the league in yards from scrimmage, touchdowns, rushing yards, averaging 23 touch, touches a game. That's not changing this week. No, it's not. And then, you know, if Thielen and Diggs are are active, you're playing them, right? Yes. You are. Yeah, we're back in. We're back in, baby. You're basically, the, the fire this, got put out. In this matchup, you're playing every relevant Viking unless you think Kyle Rudolph is relevant. <laughs> um, on the other side, though. It's the opposite. I, it's it's a it's a world where it's much more difficult it's, to it's much more murky but I what a world man the Chiefs at the beginning of the year it was you literally play everybody you you play their third wide receiver or the third running back and, you you play the them all it, oh with the Vikings was no it was jump off the ship throwing the ball ten times what but, a turn of events but I do I ten do think time. Matt, I, ten <laughs> times <laughs> that's Mike uh, Zimmer right uh, here's the deal. Matt Moore is good enough to get the job done. He's not – you're not going to see the same upside here, but I do think against this Vikings defense that Kansas City puts up enough points. I'm not terrified. You guys have been much more sympathetic to Matt Moore than I am over the last few weeks. I mean, Mike was right out of the gate. Mike had all the confidence in the world in Matt Moore. You seem to have it now. Well, he's been fine. I mean, haven't we been right? 267-2 and two last week. You've been kind of right. But, I mean, he's... 267-2, and two, man. That's exactly this what is I'm talking about. It's 2019, Mike. 267-2. and two. I mean, it, that's not very hard to do. I, and you did have... I mean, you had limited upside with some of their skill position players last week. You certainly don't have the Tyree Kill and Travis Kelsey that you would have with Pat Mahomes. That's for sure. Nor the confidence to even roll out a Sammy Watkins or a McCall Hardman. McCall Hardman... I have no confidence in. That's just, just more for snaps for me. Exactly. He's not on the field. He. Uh, what, what did he have? Like three? Four, four routes run, two catches, yeah. and a long touchdown. No, he's he's gone for now. But uh, Matt, that was good. Matt Moore was the quarterback 12 last week. It's not like you're you're not benching. Benching. That's a new word. <laughs> you're not, <laughs> you're not benching. You're not benching Tyreek Hill. I'm not saying you are. But I brought it up. Sammy Watkins. You know, you had 22% of the targets last week, but... Well, let me ask you this, because... Five for 45, no touchdowns. Did you actually have confidence back when Patrick Mahomes was playing with Sammy Watkins? No. But okay. you had confidence in Sammy Watkins last week. Yes. And I... Uh, with Matt Moore. And I don't have confidence in Sammy Watkins ever. About 27% of the time, actually. <laughs> like that taffy. But are you playing Watkins? I'm not. I no, not in this matchup. Are you starting any of the running backs against Minnesota? Please don't make. You know me Minnesota is fifth in the league against the running back position. They're only giving up sixteen point five total. You break that up across McCoy, Williams, Williams, Thompson. Yeah, you, and and you don't know who it's going to be. I mean, because what happened with the shady fumble and Damian Williams coming in and looking good, I don't think you could start any chief running back whatsoever at this matchup. All right, let's talk about the Redskins because that is so fun. The Redskins at 1-7 and seven take on the Bills. This game has a 37-point over-under. That gives the Redskins 13.75 points in this game. It's pretty much what they're given every week by Vegas, and they're like, I can't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is Bills' heavy favorites. Right now, it looks like from some of the players around the team that they're expecting Case Keenum to not be 
to not be the starter, not come out of the concussion protocol. That is terrifying. Dwayne Haskins is terrifying. They're feeding him to the wolves. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Buffalo in Buffalo, not Jason, the best if, matchup. If Dwayne Haskins was making his debut against Miami, I would say they're feeding him to the wolves. No. That's rude to say about wolves. That <laughs> you're putting wolves down. You're telling me that wolves are are okay. Fine, the coyotes. <laughs> okay, start your Bills defense. Yes, regardless. Do not start Terry McLaurin. I I mean, like don't play him. I'm. I don't think there's a world where you're going to be happy. I really don't. With with Dwayne Haskins against the Bills, you don't think he can give you the kind of game that Jeffrey gave. You know, Carson Wentz last week. What was that, Mike? You said it was yeah, six was, for 60, something like yeah, that. Yeah, four for 64. But the difference is he had Carson Wentz and not Dwayne Haskins. And he had targets. Car so far, Dwayne Haskins has not really been targeting uh, Does it change then if, if Keenum's out there, though? Because are you saying that only on the basis of Haskins yes. starting? Yes, 100%. Okay. I, so if Keenum's the out there, you would play McLaurin yes. as a wide receiver three? Yes, yes exactly. Okay. Uh, I think there are some interesting starts in this game. Peterson... The amount of attempts they're giving him, the fact the Bills have been, to me, a little bit disappointing recently against the running back position. They're actually 23rd in the NFL in the year in fantasy points given out to the running back. Peterson's going to get enough work to give you double digits. That's what I think. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the, the Buffalo Bills have not been great when it comes to their defensive line against the run. And that might be by design. You know, a lot of teams, they want to be weaker against the run and strong against the pass. That's good analytically. I think but, they want to be strong against both. Well, sure. But, I mean, a, a funneling defense sure. where you're encouraging the other team to run yeah. is, is uh, you know, we've seen that a lot. Son of Bum usually has that type of offense or, or defense. But if you look, I mean, they haven't. The, you know, the last two weeks, they gave up top 10 uh, team numbers to the the Miami Coyotes. <laughs> and, you know, last week, Philly had a, a great ground game. I, and I think they just don't have a choice. Now, the worry here is because of Haskins, Haskins hurts Adrian Peterson big time. You don't have to – I mean, you could put the entire team against the run. It doesn't affect me a whole lot. I don't think teams are sitting there going, oh, boy. We're not going to stack the box because Case Keenum's going to eviscerate us. I mean, I think you saw a lot of – you've Peterson's had tough matchups with yes. Keenum in the in recent weeks. Uh, I, Haskins hurts them driving down the field, but Peterson's not really going to score anyway. I just think Peterson could be started. Yeah, I, I think Peterson getting 70-plus yards, a lot of carries is, you know – He had I three catches last week, too. Uh, Devin Singletary or Adrian Peterson? Singletary last week, um, bunch of pass routes. Mike, you talked about game script might hurt Devin Singletary. Yeah. You, you still feel that way? Now, why? Yes. I'm confused by that because I feel like the game script of winning is great for Devin Singletary. Why? Because he's a running back, and running backs usually he, in home favored matchups but where they, they use, win. But he's the backup running back. He's the, he's not the starting running. Frank Gore is the one handling like eighty percent of the running back carries. The worry is that Gore will be carrying the clock to fruition yeah. in the second half. That, that's how I I love Devin Singletary. I think he was a great trade for guy, but he four carries, six carries, seven carries, three carries. It, he's Frank Gore is still the main running back for this team. You're holding on to Singletary, hoping that in a few weeks that turns around, but I'm not playing him with confidence in this type of a matchup. I think he, I think he is a flex worthy player personally. I, I, you know, this is a beatable defense and he's uh he's been an electric player when he's been on the field. And you know, he's not a guy that I would agree with you. I'm not playing him with confidence, right? He hasn't gotten enough volume to just say, Oh, he's a smash play. You've got to start him. But I think this is a matchup where they could get him more involved and see what they've got when they're when they're up uh, by a couple scores. Yeah, they they could one hundred percent. I'm just not betting my fantasy lineup on the increased product or increased volume yet. So Devin Singletary or Adrian Peterson, you'd go AP. I yeah, I probably would. And then you're definitely saying you would do, take Frank, Frank Gore, Gore yes, for over sure. both. Of we them. really, yeah. you know, we're we're going into week nine, but we really haven't seen much of Singletary. That's the truth. I mean, he's got four games played. And his rushing attempts four, six, seven, and three. Yeah. So, 
Well, and if you look at his four games played, it was 60% in his first, then he gets injured in the, in the second. So he only played 30% of snaps. He comes back from injury, only plays 30% of snaps as they're easing him back in. Last week was 68%. So you, it's just right. hard to predict. You really, we have not seen Singletary this year. They, he's had two full games. That's it. We're going into week 10? Is this yeah. 10? Nine. Nine. Uh, John Brown, we got him at wide receiver 16 on the yeah. week, 7.6 targets per game. Yeah, as long as there's not another blustery day in Buffalo, then oh. John Brown's a great play. I'm excited about this game. Five and two, the Colts taking on the Steelers at three and four in Pittsburgh. Colts are one point road favorites. This game's basically heads up. It's a 42 and a half point over under. I don't know what Steelers team shows up per quarter, what Mason Rudolph shows up per quarter. It seems like a difficult situation for Rudolph in this one, but they are at home. So we're kind of waiting to hear how James Conner's doing. Brooks? Do you have any news on Connor today? Nothing yet today. So yesterday he did not practice, dealing with the AC joint shoulder injury. We know that Benny Snell is going to miss a couple of weeks. He had a cleanup uh, procedure. Jalen Samuels. Can you Benny smell right now at all? I cannot. I can't smell or talk or see. Okay. So this is a, this is quite the experience. I do know that my eyes are on the inside of this mask, crying a lot, like <laughs> tears. <laughs> Tears He's just sobbing happening. inside this Chris Goblin mask. <laughs> yes. um, and I like that it's a Chris Goblin mask. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Benny Snell is out. Jalen oh, yeah, Sam Samuels is back. He should be rostered, but I expect James Conner to play. Well, that'd be nice because he's the RB9 over the last four weeks. Yeah, if he's out there, you're going to have to start I think he's like the RB9 him. on the season right now, too. Yeah, if, if 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 he's on your roster and he's active, you're going to have to start him. But it's really not a great matchup. I mean, you know, you <clears throat> you look uh, at at the performance recently from the Colts. They, you know, the the Broncos did all right. R Royce Freeman was okay. Uh, not so much Philip Lindsay. Uh, a couple weeks before that was you know a down game for the rushing game from the Texans, and obviously Kansas City didn't do anything. So the last three opponents have really not done much against the Colts. And, you know, you, you, their defense is getting healthier, so it's not a great matchup for Connor, but you still you still have to play him because there's so few running backs to get the volume that Connor's going to get. Yeah, he's just so involved in a uh, passing game as well. Mm -hmm. Juju Smith-Schuster, 5 for 103-1 and one last week on nine targets. T.Y. Hilton... On the other side of the ball, what are your thoughts on the wide receiver positions? I like Juju. I mean, th things are look like they're trending up with Mason Rudolph. the The second half of the game was much better for Mason against the Miami Dolphins. Now that was that because Xavier Howard was knocked out of the game. I'm sure it correlated at least a little bit. But Juju, we, we've talked about this ad nauseum, but Juju has not been. As bad as it feels in your heart when you actually look at his fantasy production. So uh, Juju is in for me, uh, with, without a question. Do you yeah. like Hilton more or less than Juju? Hilton has been held uh, under, 55! Oh. under 55 yards in half of his games. He's on pace for only 900 receiving yards, but he does have five touchdowns. He's obviously their best receiver. Yeah, these guys are so similar. I mean, if if who do I like more, Juju, who would I – start and is higher in my rankings is is Hilton I just really like Juju as a guy he's a cool guy um <laughs> but the both of these wide receivers are so similar right they've, they've got their backup quarterbacks they from, have no real big ceiling no ceiling they're 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 solid wide receiver twos you play both of them neither has just a monstrous game but neither is going to just completely vanished and and the Vegas the the over under on this game being 42 points that sounds about right yeah I don't expect a high output here and unfortunately that stinks because you've got those three players are pretty much weekly you know there's some guys you don't really have a decision you start Juju you start T.Y. you start James Conner and I think this is kind of a down game for all of them are we ever going to look at Vance McDonald again this year no not this year no okay no and then uh Ebron's on that fringe start not this category time. not this time <laughs> No way. No way. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's uh, what? Uh, Will, uh, Not this time. What's the actor's name? Will Riker. No, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> yes, Will, that is Will the actor's Riker. name. <laughs> oh. You guys were quoting him, right? Not today. 
What was that? Time. Unsolved Mysteries? What was that? What show <laughs> did he do? <laughs> There's you this great... Vi- you got to Google this I just book, don't want man. people to be in the dark here. There's this great video... <laughs> Fooled you. Compiling... <laughs> well, hey, why don't we do this? We've got to we've got to find the video and, and tweet it out. Okay? Yeah, because it's it, it's like a seven it's minute Jonathan, long. Jonathan uh, Frakes, Frakes? <laughs> you're Frakes? pronouncing Will Riker incorrectly. <laughs> it's yeah. so funny. I I just searched for William Riker to find it. So uh, yeah. there's, <laughs> because there's this great thing. video. Um, Ebron, Ebron, when Ebron you type is, his name in, did you mean Will Riker? <laughs> <laughs> Will Riker says, "Did you mean Will Riker?" <laughs> yes. Uh, I I think Ebron is definitely in the group of guys where if you don't have the starting you know it's who, called beyond belief that was the show he did beyond belief oh not, not this time <laughs> not this time so, you're you're mistaken wrong wrong um <laughs> just go watch the video yeah, go watch the video you will you will love it and this bit will make so much more sense um i think ebron like i would rather start ebron than darren fells i think ebron is really? more talented and has the same touchdown upside than fells does all right, the Jets take on the Dolphins. All right. One and six versus 0 and seven. The Jets are three point favorites in Miami. It's a 41 point over under. It seems like the Dolphins are willing to string together approximately 11 to 14 minutes of good football, and that's it. Well, I mean, and it might be at the beginning, it might be at the end. That's kind of Fitzpatrick's thing, though. Right? Eleven to fourteen minutes of good football. He's like, check this. Look how good I am. Now turn away. <laughs> <laughs> Look away. So we we have talked a, a lot more about Miami fantasy options recently. Mark Walton is getting the majority of snaps. Mark Walton is in play. Yeah, against this, uh, you know, at home against the Jets. Mark Walton is a Mark Walton versus Adrian Peterson. I'm oh, gonna take man. I'm gonna take AP there, but I think both are in play. Both are startable fantasy assets this week. I think my heart would just rather play Walton. Devontae Parker, you guys have talked about him as a potential flex guy. Would you rather play Devontae Parker or uh Danny Amendola? Uh that's that's close. Mm. If if I think that's a matter of your platform, because Danny Amendola is a mm. is a PPR machine. If you're in standard, I I think the upside of a touchdown is there with Parker. But Mm. Devontae Parker is a perfect name to bring up. Terry McLaurin. Okay, you don't you don't have uh You got Haskins in there. You're worried about McLaurin. You got Haskins in there. I would way rather play Devontae Parker than Terry McLaurin, even though Terry McLaurin's great and Devontae Parker's not, just because uh, Devontae Parker's been getting it done. He gets a lot of air yards and, and they're better now because they're not coming from Josh Rosen. He's he's got touchdown upside, and this is a game like this is one of the few games on a team like the Dolphins' schedule where they look at and say we can win, we have a chance, and so those teams get up, they compete, and you know I I haven't seen anything from the Jets. I still think you can play the Jets DST because eventually the Dolphins implode. Oh, Fitzpatrick will turn it over. Yeah, I mean that's that's just in his contract. I like that uh, Judge Giamatti put in here. Revenge game narrative for Ryan Fitz- Fitzpatrick. That's you, that's like <laughs> that's every, every game. game he plays. He's played on everybody in the league. That's like Josh McCown having a revenge yes. game narrative. But, it, you know, it's interesting because if, on the other side of the ball, if Lev Bell, if Robbie Anderson, if Sam Darnold, and maybe even if Chris Herndon, if they can't make the most of a Dolphins matchup, oh, Mike, man. are you willing to break up with Robbie Anderson here on the air if Robbie Anderson puts up a pure, unadulterated stinker against a Dolphins defense that ranks 25th against wide receivers, that gives up the highest percentage of 20-plus yard targets in the league. If he doesn't do it now, how will you have confidence moving forward? I will break up with him until next week's matchups where we break down the New York Jets versus the Giants, and then I will be back. <laughs> it's probably true, man. I mean, you, that's what you get with I'll some be of these mad, guys. Even, even with a Deshaun Jackson, who's a known, proven vet, who is great for fantasy and at the end of the year has monster years, you still get hot and cold. You've got to take those starts. When you've got a deep ball player, uh, you you want these matchups. In a plus matchup, you're going to play him, and you know before the game that it could it could not work out. I mean, it, this is not you're not going to be surprised if Robbie Anderson ends up with you know two for 40. Don't get me wrong. I like him in this game. I'm playing him in my dynasty league. I, I think there's tons of upside, but he's – He's entering that ca- category of if he doesn't perform here, I'm just really scared of him. I would agree more with Lev Bell. 
Like, if Lev Bell doesn't get it done in this game, then there's real worries about has he lost the step? Is he not able to perform with this offensive line? He should be comfortable. He spent all of last year in Miami. <laughs> right. This Ooh. is he's going home? Yeah. yeah. Coming home game. <laughs> Mike's going to talk about Lev Bell more shortly. Yes. As well. So, um, outside of Parker, Preston Williams, 20% uh, target share. Back of your mind, maybe? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's uh, Devontae Parker light, which I guess is something you don't <laughs> use, you don't usually want to hear that. You guys want this new diet diet soda? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it tastes like air. Okay, let's move on. Starts of the week. All right, week nine starts of the week. Mike, why don't you kick it off with your running back? I will. It's Lev Bell. Oh, let's do it. And I know some of you at home are like, well, of course I'm going to play Le'Veon Bell. But this is it. This is the moment we have <laughs> waited for this walrus face. Just to readjust your tusks, Look, Mike. You the know, run sometimes begins you now. Miami is allowed the third most points to the running back position. Combined points to the running back. Top, they've allowed top 10 in five of seven games. They've given up the most 20-yard runs to running backs. This is the time. The the buy low, if you haven't taken advantage of it, I am trying to do it. Yes, the world that we, that we scarily talked about exists of if Le'Veon Bell doesn't perform, it's in the realm of possibility. But I have, like, I'm setting it at 80% that Le'Veon Bell has a top five game this week. Ooh. It starts the run. He crushes, and you forget what happened in the beginning of the season because it's, it's – Please, <laughs> it's so. And th I think the same way about Robbie Anderson, where it's this is I'm 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 wiping the board clean this week because the the beginning of the season you had the mono man, you had a third string uh, quarterback, you had a matchup against the Patriots. Like this is this is a whole new season you, for you, me for the Jets. You you could very well be right, but I would say you need to be right because should that should this not turn out in this game, the vibes in New York for the Jets are terrible. Players trying to get traded or, or by the team that there's, you know, the the other day uh, there was a report Jamal Adams uh, was wouldn't answer the phone call from Adam Gase or their GM. Oh, he I wasn't don't ready him. to talk to them yet. So the vibes are bad. So that can all be washed away. You're 100 percent right. They come out, they crush. It's water under the bridge. Let's go show that we're a good team. But if they fail this week, I cataclysmic do, ex, implosion, demise. terrible. Now they're going hard after the number one pick. What does an Adam Gay's apology sound like? <laughs> <laughs> That's that very is his, literal. That is his native tongue. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. Um, all right. Uh, my start of the week at the running back oh position. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's oh man! Another week removed from the shoulder oh, injury. Oh <laughs> No love lost on Adam Gaze no, on this show. Never. No, or so, by any of the people that know him. Yeah, or including have to work potentially with him. his wife. Oh man! Who oh, the he child gave, story? Yeah, did you ever hear that story where Adam Gaze showed up at a meeting like an hour after his wife gave birth because he just said you're good and left and wanted to go talk to Peyton Manning. Yeah. Football. Horrific. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, all let's, right. Let's take so it. my start of the week this week at running back is Josh Jacobs, rookie running back for the Oakland Raiders. This matchup, I want pieces in it. I believe, you know, this week doesn't have a whole lot of high uh, Vegas totals, but this is one of those games where I actually think. With, I'm so excited for this game. I, I think it's going to be a high output, um, I, an exciting game. Look, if you're looking at like, how defenses do against certain positions. There's not a single team in the NFL that's given up a top 12 every single week to running backs. And the reason is because week one to the Arizona Cardinals, it was running back 13 from the Lions. Otherwise, the Lions would have given up top 12 weekly performances to the running back position as a team every single week of the season. Now you've got the Raiders at home. Josh Jacobs getting healthy. Uh, he, you know he had a somewhat down week this last week. I, I think he's an uh, absolute great play. All right, I'm going to go Jordan Howard. I said it earlier. I'm going to go Jordan Howard against Chicago, which means I've gone starts of the week against Chicago back to back weeks. Something I never thought I'd do. Last week, Jordan Howard 23 carries. We've talked about Miles Sanders. He's banged up. Look, Jordan Howard's had a very solid season. He's actually running for a nice clip per carry. He has seven rushes of 15-plus yards, which is ninth in the NFL. 
the Bears did not give up a ton of yardage to Melvin Gordon, but nobody is right now. Gordon did score. That means that there are seven touchdowns against Chicago's defense in the last four weeks given up to opposing running backs, games at home. I think Jordan Howard is a must-start this week. They should just paint his whole body green so he can, like, hulk out. With the Jordan revenge. Howard? Yes. With the revenge narrative yes. Hulk out? of Hulk angry, Hulk smash. He may do it. My quarterback start of the week, it's Savage Gardner Minshew. Houston has allowed a top 12 points against the quarterback position for four straight weeks. Gardner has been consistent, and now he's turned the volume up to 11, oh. where he's actually crushing with his new best friends, the CNC Music Factory, DJ Chark and Chris Conley. Oh, okay. Okay, I was I was connecting the dots here. There's a lot to take in. Because their names Look, start with C. There's a lot to take in with Gardner Minshew altogether, whether it's yes. facial hair, that's, jorts. That's swag. a lot of man. He's he's playing better than Baker Mayfield. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. He's he's a better quarterback right now. Yeah, so this is Josh a four Rosen. and four team. Oh, stop. Sorry. Josh <laughs> Rosen doesn't play better than anybody. That's true. Don't that you was dare too, say that anything. was too low. So you got Gardner as your start of the week. Yep. Jason. Uh, I it's the guy I had last week, and I don't blame you. Yeah, I mean, look, Matthew, when you said Kirk Cousins in real NFL has been the best quarterback over the last little while, I'm thinking, well, I think Matthew Stafford would have something to say about that because he has been awesome. They don't have a running game. They have like 16 running backs that you've never heard of now that Carryon Johnson went down, uh, and, and their passing game is on fire. They've got TJ Hawkinson as a fourth option. It looked like he was going to be rely, you know, someone they had to rely on. Now they found out where he belongs. Fourth behind Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones and Danny Amendola stepping up. Hawkinson is actually a good play this week because the Raiders are are susceptible against the tight end. Uh, so all together here, I think Matthew Stafford, I said it earlier, I want pieces in this game. I think it's a high scoring game. And if you look at, you know, what the Raiders have given up to quarterbacks, we're, you know, we've got eight weeks in the book, four of the eight weeks, half of those weeks, they have given up a top five performance, not just a top 12, but like a, a you know, when you're a top five quarterback, you help win your week. I expect a top five week out of Matthew Stafford. All right. I'm going to go the quarterback on the other side of the ball in that matchup because I love that matchup. I think it's going to be a high scoring affair and that's Derek Carr against Detroit. He's He's actually playing good football again, and Detroit is giving up a ton of points to the fantasy uh, fantasy points to the quarterback position. Derek Carr hasn't been sacked since week five. All right, impressive. He's, he's leading the NFL in completion percentage. Last week he was eighteen for thirty for two eighty five and three. He's thrown just four interceptions on this season. Like the problem in Oakland, if there's a problem, is not Derek Carr right now, and he's got Tyrell Williams back, and he's got you know. Oh, me! Could you? He's got Mike. So Derek Carr and Matthew Stafford, I love them both. Let's go to the wide receiver position. Mike? I'm going with Allen Robinson here. You, you want to give him some respect. This is the confidence play. This is the stop it with your questioning of Allen Robinson. I see the tweets. I see them, and they're mean. Well, but in fairness, they're usually criticizing Trubisky. And that is fair. They should be. Made. And I allow, well, just Allen Robinson, he has been balling out no fewer than seven targets in a game. He's pacing for over 100 receptions and over 1,200 yards with that Mitch Trubisky. Philly is, granted, not as bad in the secondary as their number one points allowed to the wide receiver ranking. Like they've given up some burst games. Yeah, they've gotten a little healthier. They're a little healthier, but they're. They are susceptible to great wide receivers, and Allen Robinson is a great wide receiver, and it's time to to acknowledge that Allen Robinson is great, and he's great for fantasy. It feels like you need two catches from Trubisky to equal one catch from someone else. That's fair. But At least two can targets. Do it. At least two, well, more than two targets. Jason. Three targets. Six targets. Are the same as one There's target. one target from a competent. Right. All right, we're mean today. That we're well, dressed, we're dressed up, and we're mean. But it. you know what, <laughs> man, Jason is. It's not, it's, you have really taken on the persona of a goblin. <laughs> a goblin would be just as mean as Jason, if not more. Yeah, uh, this so, isn't me. This is Chris Goblin. Oh, Jason, I love your start of the week. I hadn't seen it yet. Oh, thank you. My start of the week is is a guy that. Uh, <laughs> Look, you were disappointed in last week, and I'm going. I'm going. Couple weeks in a row, actually. Yeah, yeah, you you thought you had something special in Michael Gallup, and you've been disappointed. 
And I am telling you, you should not go away from Michael Gallup. You should start him. According to PFF, he has the fourth highest wide receiver cornerback matchup advantage in all of football this week. This is the fourth highest over under of the week. I mean, the Cowboys are coming off a bye. Gallup is allowing, you know, that he was he was still dealing with an injury. We were surprised how quick he got back from it. But coming off a bye. He was saddled with that for a while. Oh, Whoa. yeah. Well, let's get back on that horse, huh? Uh, so <laughs> He has looked like he's been running in a glue factory. <laughs> oh, come on. Was that too dark? That was too dark. <laughs> Oh, my even, goodness. Even for a goblin. <laughs> that was so good, though. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, you were saying words and stats and stuff. Yeah, but the point is, he's he's healthy now coming off the bye. The, the Giants, they rank 30th against wide receiver, averaging 35.3 fantasy points given up per week. Chris... Uh, uh, Chris <laughs> Goblin is me. Uh, Michael Gallup is who <laughs> nice you should save. start. Thank you. All right. I'm going to go with CNC Music Factory, believe yeah. it or not. DJ Chark and Chris Conley are my co-starts of the week. You're probably starting Chark, so I want to give a little uh, butt tap to Chris Conley. Throw him in your flex. He's been, uh, you know, Chark has been as reliable as they get, but Conley actually has seven targets in back-to-back -back weeks, and this comes down to matchup. Houston is getting eviscerated through the air. Get this, nine touchdowns to opposing wide receivers in the last four weeks. 35 or more fantasy points to opposing wide receivers in four straight weeks. And he has one of PFF's biz biggest mismatches uh, with another Conley, allowing over two yards per route on Houston. And so, to me, you know, Marcus Lee just went on IR. Westbrook's banged up. Houston should turn this into a shootout. It's not like Gardner Minshew can sit back and hand it off to Leonard Fournette all game long. So, Chark, Conley, those are my guys. At the tight end, I think you can stream Greg Olson this week. I agree. I like he's, this. He's at home. He's playing the Titans. It didn't work out for Cameron Brait and the Buccaneers last week as at, at the tight end position. But Tennessee, Tennessee they, they've only been stout against the tight end position twice. And that was Cameron Brait, and that was Noah Fant. Other than that, they've given up a top 12 combined points to the tight end position in six of eight matchups. Greg Olson at home, I think you could stream him. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. You guys had the streaming tight ends. I, you know, before I did, I was the third one to pick one, so I had to really go with all of those Hawkinsons, Ebrons, Goddard's options where it's like, who do you go with? And the one that I landed on was, who would I go with on my personal team? I believe in Jonu Smith. I, he was my start of the week last week, had a big boy game with, uh, you know, with Delaney Walker out and the ankle injury that he's dealing with is the same ankle that he, I mean, it's the same foot, the same area that he, that he cost the whole season last year, the season ending horrific ankle injury. He missed practice on Wednesday. The Titans practice report is not out yet, but I expect Delaney Walker to not play this week. And if he does, then I think Jonu Smith is a, a good matchup. He's he's got a great uh, matchup advantage against Carolina's Eric Reed, he, who's a liability at safety. That's good for Jonu Smith. And two of the last three weeks, they've given up uh, top ten performance. Uh, and the the only week that they didn't in the last three weeks was a bye week. Talking about Carolina, so uh, the tight end position's rough. I think you if you've got to make one of those plays, Jonu Smith would be the guy I'm looking. He had a great for. week last week and. Uh, I'll give you my tight end start of the week, and then I want to comment on something that took place in league of record. Hunter Henry. Oh, oh gosh. No, Jason, you did He's it. the start of the week against Green Bay. No fewer than six targets since he's returned. No fewer than 47 yards since he's returned. Green Bay is 27th against the tight end. Jason's fist pumping. I'll tell you why in a minute. But Hunter Henry's the start of the week. That'll wrap those up. We've got boom, boom, kicker. But before we get into that, it, just a little gamesmanship here. Jason. Nicely is, done. Jason is facing Mike. I was so pissed at you yesterday, Andy. For teasing that, yeah. Yes, because I already had a claim in on Jeff Wilson Jr. So did I. So oh, you did too? Mike, yeah. so had, uh, Mike had Raheem Mostert. Now that, see, that'll be your luck, Jason. Raheem Mostert will be active. Jeff Wilson will be inactive, and somehow you'll get screwed that way. Yeah. But Mike went out to pay a dollar of fab for Jeff Wilson Jr. as a spot start potentially tonight if needed. And Jason went out, and for the sole purpose of keeping him away from Mike. No. I have Terry McLaurin in my lineup right now. Oh, so you're gonna maybe going to maybe play Jeff Wilson. Yes. Well, this will be very exciting. You ready for Boom Boom? Nope. <laughs>
Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This Halloween, the temperatures have cooled. There's only one kicker today, the 49ers' Robbie Gould. I was going to ask you to do it like a goblin, but I think what you did was better. I think it was very, you know, yeah. very Halloween. It was very Halloweeny. <laughs> the temperatures have cooled. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I like what you did the first time. Thank you. In or out tomorrow, game day alerts at jointhefoot.com. We're actually, uh, we just linked up a new market share report, uh, which is exclusive to jointhefoot.com supporters. We just linked up a new target share report. We'll have a new red zone report hitting today, um, bringing some new and exciting proprietary data to you as you make decisions. We have the stream finder we just added. We've got Mike who is now at uh, stage 11 of dealing with tusks in his face. Oh, update on my Instagram. It's coming <laughs> soon. So make sure you follow at right. Jason FFL. <laughs> yeah. Follow Mike at FF Hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. That's Twitter and Instagram. Want to thank the studio sponsor. Pristine auction. Alvin Kamara signed Jersey or sorry, a signed mini helmet yesterday. $76.17. Go to pristineauction.com. Use the registration code BALLERS. Have a wonderful, safe, yes. happy Halloween. Stay safe out there, Our everybody. Our kids are so excited, I'm telling you. Enjoy the candy. We'll see Goodbye. you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.